I hate to overreact to one week, but I'm going to let you know these rankings look very different than they did a week ago. Starting off tier one, we'll still have CeeDee Lamb behind Tyree Kill one and two, but we actually have a new wide receiver in this tier. Mr. Cooper Cup, last week he was there at wide receiver 12 for us. I don't see how you don't have him as a top three option this week. No Puka Nakua, just going to absolutely dominate the target share here. 21 targets last week and an implied team total of over 24 points this week and a great matchup going up against Arizona. You could make an argument to have Cup over Lamb, which is crazy. And I'm kicking myself for not taking Cup over Nico Collins in the Flock League in round two. I'm dropping down to our next tier. We're going to go a modern state round of four. Yes, you can see by these rankings, I'm not panicked at all. 29-point implied team total going up against Tampa. Should be a great Lions offense. Um, A.J. Brown at five. We know who A.J. Brown is. Big plays, great offense, good matchup against Atlanta. Um, Justin Jefferson at six. Crap matchup going up against the Niners. Obviously, Darnold looked very good week one. I do think you probably have a step backwards from this offense, but Addison is banged up at the moment. Um, Debo Samuel at seven. For Debo Samuel, I am making this ranking under the assumption that Christian McCaffrey will be out. With no CMC, you had a ton of usage for Debo Samuel as a rusher in week one. I would expect that to carry over into week two against Minnesota. And then at eight, we will have Jamar Chase. Now, Chase was my round one pick in the Flock League. I'm expecting a Cincinnati Bengals bounce back. At the time of this recording, I don't know if T. Higgins is going to be playing or not. Of course, I will update these weekly rankings every single day over there on flockfantasy.com. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we're going to go Garrett Wilson at nine. You know what? I think you can make an argument to have Wilson a tier above this. This is a wide receiver that dominated the target share in New York this past week. What was crazy is how concentrated this Jets offense was really just between Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, Brees Hall. Those were the only players that touched the ball until the very end of the game. This should be a much better offense going into the future. I think Wilson is a very easy projection as a top 10 wide receiver, and the Jets offense will be better than a very tough matchup against the Niners last week. Um, Nico Collins will be our guy at 10. Obviously, Stefan Diggs is the wide receiver that scores the receiving touchdowns in Houston this past week. But if you look at the underlying usage, Nico Collins still does look like he is the wide receiver one. He is the alpha here. If you are looking at the intended air yards per game. Now going over to 11, we will have Jalen Waddle Thursday night game going up against the Buffalo Bills. This arguably should be the highest scoring game of the week. I mean, right now, this is a game that has a 50 point over under. Now, dropping down to our next tier, Rasheed Rice will be our option at 12. We saw Rice against the Baltimore Ravens essentially look like he is just the new age Michael Thomas. He's only going to run the slant, but he's going to pick up a ton of targets. And obviously, those targets are extremely valuable when they're coming from Mahomes. We're going to have DJ Moore at 13. I'm making this ranking under the assumption that Roma Dunze is going to miss. Not only is Roma Dunze going to miss, but Keenan Allen is a little bit banged up. I'm expecting Keenan to play, but still... I am hoping that we have more than 93 passing yards from Caleb Williams this next week. It's a good matchup going up against the Houston Texans. The Bears right now do have a lower implied team total of around 19 and a half points, but I do kind of expect uh, Caleb Williams a breakout here in week two. And by breakout, I mean at least 150 passing yards at the minimum. Uh, Mike Evans will be our next guy at 14. Going up against the Detroit Lions, it's a good matchup. Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield confirmed last week that Yep, um, Evans is not washed. He's still at the peak of his powers. I don't know how he has managed, given the fact that, I mean, you look at all these other wide receivers in 2014, Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins, Allen Robinson. I, I mean, Brandon Cooks, all these guys are washed out. Mike Evans is the only one standing. I guess Adams is fine as well. Um, Devonta Smith at 15. Kind of know who Smith is. If you look at the target volume week one, Smith had a really nice role Going up against the Atlanta Falcons should be a decent matchup where you have an implied team total of 27 points. And I don't expect just every single touchdown in this offense to only go to Saquon Barkley and A.J. Brown all season. And we will have Brandon Ayuk at 16. I understand Ayuk was extremely disappointing last week. It was a very tough matchup going up against the Jets. Not only was it a very tough matchup, but at the same time, he missed so much preparation time in training camp. I think Brandon Ayuk will be a larger role in this offense going forward. I still think this is one of the best offenses in the NFL. It's a much better matchup against the Vikings than what you had against Sauce Gardner and the Jets. 
Now, of course, Daniel Jones imploded, but I do think the Niners are a little bit better than the Giants are. Now, dropping down to our next tier, Drake London against the Philadelphia Eagles. You had the wide receivers against the Eagles in week one actually putting up a decent performance. While I would be concerned about this Atlanta Falcons offense, if you had expectations that this was going to be a top five offense coming into the season, clearly that doesn't look like the case. I do think you get a little bit of a breakout here for Kirk Cousins in Atlanta in week two. Right now, you have an implied team total of 20 and a half points. And we know the Philadelphia Eagles should be leading this game the majority of the way. So I don't think they're going to be able to just lean on Bijan Robinson. I think they will have to air it out. I'm still in on London as a wide receiver too. Um, Stefan Diggs will be our guy at 18. Like I said, y'all know I drafted way more Diggs this year than almost any of these other Houston receivers because I was confident Diggs over Dell. I would love to say, oh, Diggs is the guy, Diggs is the guy, Diggs is the guy. He has the touchdowns. But if you look at the air yards, Diggs really was only utilized around the line of scrimmage in week one. Going up against the Chicago Bears, this is a game where the Texans are favored by almost a full touchdown. So what you should probably expect is this to be a Joe Mixon game where Mixon will be very high in our running back rankings that come out tomorrow. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. will be our next guy at 19. Now, I did not want to put Harrison this high. Uh, I mean, last week we ranked him at 16. People were screaming at me that we were underestimating him. I have a feeling we're going to rank him at 19 this week. People are going to be screaming at me that he should not be up this high in these rankings. I just don't know who to put him behind on this list because right now sportsbooks are projecting out the Cardinals to be in a very high scoring game against the Rams. This is a game with an over under of almost 50 points or actually a little bit over 50 points. I still believe Harrison was an elite prospect coming out. I think maybe it's just going to take the rookies a little bit longer. This is why I would say be patient with your rookies. So do not bench Marvin Harrison Jr. this week. Whether you want to put him at the flex, whether you want to put him at wide receiver too, I don't care where you put him in these rankings, but I do believe he needs to be in your lineup. Chris Olave is somebody that obviously was very, very disappointing week one. I am almost more concerned about Olave because you go over and look at the projections in New Orleans this week. While Derek Carr just lit the world on fire week one against a, I don't know, a JV football team in the Carolina Panthers. Right now, you have sportsbooks saying that the Dallas Cowboys win this game comfortably. Not only do the Dallas Cowboys have a massive spread of a touchdown on this game, but at the same time, the implied team total for the New Orleans Saints here is only around 19 and a half points. Now, I will say in this Dallas Cowboys game, you better make sure you are taking advantage of the underdog offer that they have with C.D. Lamb, more than less than half a total yard for this week. Ridiculous amount of promos underdog is offering. You have the C.D. Lamb special pick more than less than half a total yard. You have the profit boost. You have college football discounts, NFL discounts. I'm not any good at pickums, but I made over 200 bucks week one just because I took advantage of the promos that they were offering every single day. And of course, if you want to check out any of those pickums on Underdog, you can find the link in the description in the comment section. Code Flock will get you a 50% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Plus, I will actually review your fantasy football team for you for free in a live stream through flockfantasy.com. Just make sure you use code Flock on Underdog. Now, going over to our next guy, we're going to look at Devontae Adams. Adams, extremely disappointing week one, and I don't think this gets better. Going up against the Baltimore Ravens, this is the largest spread of the week. The Raiders have an implied team total of 16 points. This is going to be a bloodbath. The Ravens are going to stomp on them. Brock Bowers, the rookie tight end, led the Raiders in targets week one. Maybe this is a little low for Adams. Y'all know I really did not like Devontae Adams in drafts this year, primarily because this offense was going to be a stinker. Adams has declined for three straight seasons, and Adams is going into year 11 of his NFL career. Now, Chris Godwin will be our next guy at 22. Godwin, phenomenal game this past week. Going up against Detroit should be a spot where they really do have to throw the ball with consistency. You're going up against the Lions, one of, if not the best NFL teams this season. You have an implied team total of 22 points. I think Baker probably takes a little bit of a step backwards, but also, I don't know if Mike Evans just continues to score almost every single touchdown in this offense. Jalen McMillan had a score last week as well. So I think Godwin is a very safe projection every single week as a wide receiver too, and it's a good matchup going up against Detroit. Um, Zay Flowers will be our next guy at 23. Now, good news, bad news. Um, good news is you have an applied team total of 25 and a half points for Baltimore. So they're going to score a lot of points. 
Um, bad news is the Raiders aren't going to be able to do anything. So I actually think that this is probably going to be a Derrick Henry game where the pass attempts aren't going to be through the roof for Lamar Jackson in Baltimore here. So when you see my running back rankings tomorrow, you'll see I'm extremely, extremely high on Henry. I think Flowers is still an okay play. I clearly the only wide receiver of relevance. You're going to be running a two, ton of two tight end sets, and you may actually get a little bit of a bounce back from Mark Andrews in this game. Now, Tank Dell will be our next wide receiver at 24. Now, y'all know I was team Diggs over Dell, Diggs over Dell, Diggs over Dell all offseason. So I would love to come out here and I'd love to say, oh, Dell, um, uh, he's gone. He's bye-bye forever. It's Stefan Diggs time. No. The reality is you look at the underlying usage. Tank Dell was a major, major piece of this Houston Texans offense. I believe this is going to be one of the best passing offenses, if not the best passing offense in the NFL this year. Everything is concentrated just between Nico, Diggs, and Dell. So Dell is still definitely a player that you're going to be starting from week to week perspective. What you're hoping for in this game is you're hoping that Caleb can come out and just show a respectable performance. That way Houston is possibly forced to throw the ball at least a little bit in the second half. Now dropping down to our next tier, Malik Neighbors, somebody that y'all know is low on, just given the overall offensive environment. But this is a phenomenal matchup going up against Washington. You have an implied team total of actually 20 and a half points for the New York Giants this week. So sportsbooks are saying, yeah, the Giants aren't going to be just a complete dumpster fire. Malik Neighbors in his first game ever had 30% of this team's receiving yards. Plus, this is a Washington offense that just made Baker Mayfield look like the best quarterback in the NFL. So I think that it's a good spot going up against this defense. Neighbors has already dominated the market share perspective. And it seems like Daniel Jones will be a little bit better this week than he was last now, Michael Pittman Jr. will be our next guy at 26. I do not know if Josh Downs is going to be playing this week or not. If Josh Downs is playing, I think Pittman's maybe a little bit less exciting than this. If Downs is ruled out, I think Pittman is possibly a little more exciting than this. Like I said, I'll update my rankings on flogfantasy.com every single day as we get this injury news. In the case of Michael Pittman Jr., last week wasn't pretty because you had nine completed passes in Indy. Anthony Richardson went... We're only hitting dingers. All right, I'm either going to be hitting a home run or I'm going to strike out. I want nothing in between. If we see a little bit more of a balanced uh, quarterback here with Anthony Richardson, where it's not just deep ball, deep ball, deep ball in week two, I think it can be a fine spot. Uh, the Colts are going to be favored in this game by a decent margin. You should have no Jordan Love. And I think Michael Bittman Jr. is still the wide receiver one. Alec Pierce is going to fall back down to earth very, very soon. Um, DK Metcalf as our next option at wide receiver 27. Said it time and time again, while I understand that DK Metcalf has the same physique that I do, he is built like a monster, of course, and that means everybody thinks that he has some crazy fantasy football ceiling. He has one season in his NFL career finishing higher than the wide receiver 20. Historically, he's always a low in wide receiver two, high in wide receiver three. This matchup against New England isn't great. I mean, keep in mind the New England Patriots defense just shut down the Cincinnati Bengals, and at the same time, I mean, this is a spot where the Patriots offense most likely will not be able to get the ball going, and it's going to be a lower scoring game environment overall. So not the biggest DK Metcalf guy this week. Xavier Worthy at 28. With Worthy, I have no idea if Hollywood Brown's going to be playing yet. If Hollywood is ruled out, I think you can move Xavier Worthy a little bit higher than this, but I do not view Xavier Worthy just yet as a must-start player every single week. Trust me, I hope he turns into it. Hook him horns. I love to see our guys going out there and succeeding. The issue is, if we're going to be realistic, while yes, Worthy did have two touchdowns in his NFL debut, he had three targets. Now, am I expecting that target volume to maintain all season? Am I expecting him to only have three targets in week two? Of course not. We all know the volume will go up the role will go up for Xavier Worthy over time. The efficiency is going to crash dramatically based off what it was week one. But overall, if he turns into a receiver that seeing eight targets a game from Patrick Mahomes, it doesn't matter if the efficiency falls. He's an elite athlete. You have the big play potential every single week, and he's just going to absolutely crush. This should also be a high scoring game going up against the Cincinnati Bengals that I think you can be excited about. I just don't know if Hollywood's playing. I want to see the volume come for Xavier Worthy I think everybody who benched Worthy last week that just immediately jams them in as a wide receiver too over guys like Tank Dell, you may get disappointed this week. 
Now, going over to our next player, we're going to look at George Pickens. There was so much that happened in Pittsburgh this past week. Obviously, Justin Fields was under center. And we got to see a little bit of a sneak peek of this Arthur Smith offense. George Pickens was not out there for every snap. George Pickens played like 75% of the snaps here in Pittsburgh. This is the Arthur Smith experience. This is the Arthur Smith show. We know with Justin Fields under center, the passing volume is going to be very bad here in Pittsburgh. Now, with that being said, George Pickens dominates from a market share perspective. It's very similar to what we saw with Justin Fields and DJ Moore in Chicago last year, where Justin Fields is going to have one read, he's going to lock into that guy, and he's not necessarily going to be going through his progressions. So Pickens should have a very high target share and a very garbage passing offense. Terry McLaurin is somebody that I am going to have a difficult time figuring out what I'm doing with. In the Flock League, I did just go out there and I offered Terry McLaurin in a trade for T. Higgins. So maybe by the time this video is out, hopefully he's off my team and hopefully I have T. Higgins. But anyway, going up against the Giants this week, you actually have an implied team total of 23 and a half points. This Giants defense, this Giants secondary made Sam Darnold look like a very good NFL quarterback. Not saying Darnold is horrendous, but I don't think he's very good. The issue is, if you look at Jaden Daniels and what happened week one, Daniels did not look deep downfield. You had one deep target for Terry McLaurin. But all the completed passes were right there across the line of scrimmage. The two leading receivers were the running backs with Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler. After that, you had old man Zach Ertz. Jaden Daniels was just a deep ball machine in college. So the hope is that this does kind of change and Jaden Daniels all of a sudden is peppering Terry McLaurin with more targets. I think it's a good matchup for that to happen. So if Terry McLaurin is on my roster this week and Amari Cooper is on my roster as well, for my second flex spot, I'm going to be playing Terry McLaurin over Amari. Um, but before we get to Amari, Calvin Ridley, um, DeAndre Hopkins, it looks like he's maybe done skis with this injury. Um, but like we said, coming into the season, I know everybody was in on Tennessee, but if you looked at sports books, they were saying the Titans are going to be a bottom five offense. I listen to sports books. I don't listen to hype. So it's kind of bought into the Titans being a very bad team here. Calvin Ridley is the wide receiver one in a very bad offense, but that's kind of the story with all these wide receivers in this range, right? That's George Pickens. That's Terry McLaurin. It's Calvin Ridley. It's Amari Cooper. It's why they're all ranked next to each other. Ridley does have a very tough matchup going up against the Jets. However, and then Amari Cooper going up against Jacksonville. You have an applied team total of only 19 points. Now, Amari Cooper absolutely dominated the target share week one. Amari was about, I mean, an inch away from having a long receiving touchdown, which actually kind of would have saved his day from a fantasy perspective in Dallas. Obviously, burned anybody who started him. I started him there in my second flex. I'm going to be benching him this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars and really hoping that Deshaun Watson looks a little bit better against a little bit of a worse defense. Now, Keenan Allen will be our last wide receiver in this tier. Keenan Allen was flooded with target volume week one. Keenan Allen was a couple of grabs away from having a decent fantasy day. Obviously, it did not happen. Caleb Williams only had 93 passing yards. But going into the future, I think Caleb Williams will be much better. You will most likely have no Roma Dunze. So Keenan Allen may end up actually being much higher in my rankings this week than what this video is showing. I just want to make sure Keenan Allen's good to go. Keenan's dealing with his own injuries. So this will be one of those rankings I have to update on flogfantasy.com when we get more information. The same thing with T. Higgins at 34. If T. Higgins plays this week, I'd probably be a little bit hesitant to just jam him in immediately. It's a matchup going up against the Chiefs, where obviously the Chiefs have one of the best defenses in the NFL. But since they have a great offense as well, Cincinnati would have to go out there and throw the ball consistently in the second half. The reality is we don't know if Higgins will be good to go. We don't know if he is good to go, what capacity he'll be in. We're going to have to get reports later in the week, and I will keep my rankings up to date on the site for y'all. Um, Jamison Williams at 35. I know we probably have a bunch of people screaming at us in the comment section about Jamison here, but obviously absolutely crushed for everybody's bench in week one. If you started Jamison Williams, let me know in the comment section. Bravo to you. I think everybody who has Jamison's probably going to run to jam them in their lineup this week. And I would just be a little bit hesitant. While it is a phenomenal matchup going up against Tampa with an implied team total of 29 points, Jamison Williams, in my mind, has not proven to be anything other than what we already knew. 
He is a deep ball specialist that's going to be a good NFL wide receiver because he's going to make safety attention, shadow him, and take away that deep ball, and the defense doesn't want to be broken up an 80-yard receiving touchdown. So he's going to stretch NFL defenses. He's going to create space underneath for this running game, for Ramon Ross St. Brown, for Sam Laporta. And of course, you are going to have a crazy ceiling when Jamison Williams does connect with those long receiving touchdowns. So I think he'll still be a very volatile wide receiver from a week-to-week perspective. Obviously, he looked phenomenal in week one, which is why I think he's for sure a play for you in the flex spot this week, dependent on the injuries that you are dealing with. Um, Keon Coleman will be our next guy here. Keon going up against Miami. It's a short week, Thursday night game. So obviously, uh, when you can, you kind of want to avoid these Thursday night contests. But Keon Coleman saw the most snaps, ran the most routes. Looks like he is the wide receiver one for Josh Allen. And if that's the case, I am in on Keon Coleman as we were this offseason. And I'm so happy I did not let y'all convince me that he's too raw, he's too raw, he's too raw. Week one, this guy was the wide receiver one for the Bills. Um, Christian Kirk, Brian Thomas Jr. will be our next guys at 37-38. Going up against Cleveland, while yes, Dallas had themselves today, it is a tough Cleveland Browns defense to play. It's going to be a lower scoring game environment overall. Gabe Davis actually plays well ahead of Kirk, Brian Thomas Jr. if you're just looking at snaps in this offense. But Gabe Davis is going to be that field stretching option, right? Gabe Davis isn't someone that you can consistently rely upon. He's going to be creating space underneath for the running game, creating space underneath for these guys like Christian Kirk and Brian Thomas. And I've already moved Brian Thomas ahead of Christian Kirk in my rest of season rankings on flockfantasy.com. Just from my weekly rankings, I would like to see it from Brian Thomas just one more week before we just immediately submit him as the wide receiver one. Um, And Ladd McConkie actually had himself a phenomenal day week one going up against Carolina. This is a spot where the issue is um, the spread on this game is about seven points. You should most likely expect this to be a game where the Los Angeles Chargers go, you know what? We can just run the ball and win. I don't know if the passing volume is going to take a dramatic step forward in Los Angeles. Obviously, Herbert really didn't have anything in week one. Lad McConkey looks like he's already locked himself into that wide receiver one role, though. And this should be a very good team. Lad McConkey, I didn't love him as a prospect, but obviously being the wide receiver one for Justin Herbert in a very thin wide receiver room is just a phenomenal job to have. Now, Deontay Johnson, I said it last week. I've said it for all offseason. He's a wide receiver that has serious target competition and one of the worst offenses in the NFL. And I don't know if people are lying to y'all. I don't know why people are so in on Deontay Johnson. I saw somebody say in one of the recent comments that Deontay Johnson had a 33% team target share and he didn't even play the fourth quarter. Where are you getting that from? Look at the targets going to Xavier. Leggett led this team in targets. Look at the targets going to Adam Thielen. Deontay Johnson is not some target hog here in Carolina. No, there is very real target competition. It's a horrendous offense. Right now, you have an implied team total of 16 and a half points. I'm sorry if you drafted Deontay Johnson, but don't come up with lies about his target share that justifies it. Uh, Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, back to back. Uh, Looks like Malik Willis is going to be your starting quarterback, right? So it doesn't matter how damn good Jaden Reed was week one. If Malik Willis is your starting quarterback, RIP, do not start him. I almost say the same thing. What's so funny is with Cortland Sutton going up against Pittsburgh, you have an implied team total of 16 and a half points. Bo Nix being your starting quarterback, you have a lower implied team total than what's in Green Bay. Horrible offense. They spread the ball out to so many different guys week one. Obviously, Sutton is the locked and loaded wide receiver one for this team, but this is like the tier of players that you're just in garbage offenses, so it doesn't really matter. And then the next tier, Tyler Lockett, actually was the wide receiver one in Seattle week one. I still have Jackson Smith and Jigba a higher in my rest of season rankings. Definitely helps my underdog teams where I don't have much JSN. I have a lot of Lockett. But it is a lower scoring game environment going up against the New England Patriots this week. So I'm not super excited about it. Um, Joshua Palmer, 46. I thought Palmer was going to crush last week. I thought Palmer was set up perfectly with Lad McConkie, his first NFL game ever. No DJ Chark, blah, blah, blah. Palmer does nothing. Uh, a little bit of fighting, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, going up against Carolina, I don't think they're going to have to throw the ball a ton. 
Um, Brandon Cooks look good. Brandon Cooks does get banked up at the same time. Going up against New Orleans, there's a very large spread in this game. The Dallas Cowboys could be able to run the ball in the second half if they wanted to. Um, Jordan Addison at 48. Horrible matchup going up against the Niners. Plus, Addison dealing with an ankle injury. We don't know if he'd be good to go. And if he was, what capacity he would be good to go in. Um, Alan Lazard, 49. Obviously, Alan Lazard just absolutely crushes week one. Am I expecting that to be a consistent thing? Probably not. Going up against Tennessee, it's going to be a low-scoring game environment where they can probably run the ball with Brees Hall. And then Rashid Shaheed going up against the Dallas Cowboys. Implied team total, 19 and a half points. Going to be a very low-scoring Saints offense. I think they come back to down to earth dramatically. And I think you probably have more targets going to Chris Olave this week. But I think that's all I have for you. Really hope that I was able to help you out with these rankings. And of course, if you wanted to check out any of those crazy promos over there on Underdog, get the CD Lamb special pick of more than less than half a total yard. Get the profit boost on Thursday. Get the NFL discounts. Get the college football discounts on Saturday. Find that link in the description and comment section. If you use code FLOCK, you're going to get a 50% of positive bonus up to $1,000. Plus with code FLOCK, I will review your fantasy football team in one of these live streams through flockfantasy.com for free. All you have to do is make sure you have an account set up on flockfantasy.com with the same email address that you signed up to Underdog Fantasy and made that $10 deposit with. But thank you again. I really do appreciate you. I really hope you have a great day. And I really hope we get to see you out with the live stream and I can check your team out later tonight.